Okay, my favorite is solving the mystery of a posterior open bite. Um, so on the ClinCheck, you can um, open up previous treatment plans, and I always do that whenever there is a posterior open bite. So here is the current situation and the current posterior open bite, and this is where the patient started. So I always look back and see what worked well, what didn't work, what movements were planned, um, etc. So looking through here, I like that there were retention attachments. Clearly there is an anterior um, crossbite and some IPR planned, which I think is a good thing to uh, increase the uh, length of contacts here um, and protect uh, these teeth from being pushed too far on uh, buckle bone. So um, overall, I think a lot of this case went well. There were a few movements that were difficult to do that may not have executed 100%, such as the extrusion um, of these lower premolars, possibly the intrusion of this canine, um, although there were some good retention attachments to uh, help facilitate that. And then the end result um, is, you know, finishing with a, uh, should be some anterior clearance as uh, the upper lateral comes buckle and then the canine comes in. Uh, the molar crossbite is left alone here, which I think is a good thing. Um, and so then we go to the next treatment plan, which is here. So a huge improvement from where the patient started with these rotations um, and overall pretty good occlusal scheme um, and just a, uh, an open contact between the centrals. So this ClinCheck is, I think, meant to close that contact um, and it looks straightforward enough. The downside to it is that there was a fair amount of buckle movements being planned um, on the patient's left side in the posterior, and those may have contributed to the posterior open bite, um, uh, as well as not leaving enough clearance, um, interincisal clearance, to leave room for this space to really close. Um, additionally, bite ramps were not used here, therefore the molars may have had an opportunity to passively intrude. Bite ramps weren't going to be very effective in the beginning of this case because the patient started off end to end, but now that that's been relieved, um, that would have, um, that could be a contributing factor. So um, let's take a look at when, where we went next, which is treatment plan number 10. And let's take off the attachments um, just to, and the these movements just to just assess the teeth. So from treatment plan nine to treatment plan 10, um, I'm also thinking that the patient maybe didn't wear the aligners very well or something occurred because we see there's a lot more, um, a lot more rotations of the anterior teeth and then really the posterior open bite starts to present itself. Um, so something occurred that doesn't look like what we would consider normal progression but let's take a look at the bite here. So now we have an anterior interference here and there's one here. And I think those are the main contributing factors to the entire posterior open bite is that all the teeth are hung up in these anterior contacts. So let's go ahead and take this away so we can see a little bit more clearly. And now we're still looking at treatment plan 10 and then I'll put the attachments back on. And then from here, there were just a lot of movements that weren't totally going to happen. So these molar movements of the lower molars being extruded without attachments, um, that is unfortunately something that gets planned in from the Align software that's entirely not predictable. Um, a lot of rotation that didn't need to happen with this premolar um, in the first place. And so just a lot of distracting movements in the posterior without bunch retention of the aligners on the teeth that would have been really helpful to finish out and really make these lower anterior movements more predictable as well as uh, relieve the anterior interferences and then i think bite ramps still would have been beneficial to prevent the molars from passively intruding is that still could be a contributing factor um, so this clincheck was just um, looks good in the anterior, but just ultimately, I don't think it was going to be all that effective. So now we are here at treatment plan 11, and knowing that we definitely want to add bite ramps into this, 
um, at this point, but doing um, extrusion of the posterior teeth or all of these, you know, kind of root torquing movements, I think isn't going to be helpful in the posterior, but I do like the in anterior intrusion um, and relieving what is still now um, interfering contacts in the anterior, that is absolutely what needs to happen. But if we can do that while holding the posterior teeth as our anchor teeth, then this is going to be predictable. So let me show you what that looks like. Here is what the case looks like with predictable anterior movement, where none of these posterior teeth are being moved. They are being held as anchor teeth. Um, we have retention and deep bite attachments so that the aligners are well engaged with the arch. For upper incisor intrusion, um, having a, a other retention or support attachments are very helpful for these long rooted teeth and then similar aspect for the lower anterior. What isn't shown here are the bite ramps. Those are not able to be placed by the 3D controls, so we would need to request those from the CAD designers. I can spell. Um, and then we'd want to finish with as much anterior clearance as we see in the posterior. Now there is a bite visualization that can be used. I don't love this tool um, because it's not the most accurate. Um, of course, teeth are not going to bite just vertically together. Um, there is a condyle involved, um, but overall, and so I'm not going to pay much attention to these occlusal contacts. If they finish this way, that would be amazing. Um, but ultimately, uh, if I see roughly this much space and you can eyeball it, between the posterior teeth, then we want to have at least this much space in the anterior so that once these interferences are cleared, then the, uh, then the posterior occlusion can come back together again. Uh, some equilibration still may need uh, to happen uh, as we can't totally predict nor control um, tens of millimeters that the patient may feel as far as um, uh, occlusal contact at the finish. Thanks so much.